faculty. And then it was year six and my contract is now up. I want you to pay me what you're paying the men. I'm, I have the highest demographics of all women in television, 18 to 49. You can see I've smartened up by this point. You know, I'm now six years into success and, and made good money and you just learn stuff about the business. And I'm looking around and thinking, why are all the men, including John Ritter, making 10 times more? I didn't know John Ritter was making more at that time because we're supposed to have favored nations. Why are all the men getting 10 times more than me? And, and, or any of the women on television? And I say to John and, and Joyce the, at the end of the season before, you know, my contract's up. You two have already renegotiated because you were here before. Mine's up uh, right before the start of the season. I'm going to ask for big money and a piece of the back end. And if you two back me up because we have favored nations, we'll all get it. So I'll be the patsy. So my husband went in and the lawyer for ABC was George Sunderland. And my lawyer was Gunther Schiff. And Alan Hamill and Gunther Schiff walk in and Mickey Ross is sitting in a chair. It doesn't get up when Alan walks in. ABC lawyer Sunderland looks at my lawyer and says, you got me last time, but you're not going to get me this time because they had negotiated the Cindy Williams Penny Marshall deal. And ABC was paying more for Penny and Cindy than they wanted to. My lawyer right then should have backed out really and said, I'm not going to do you any good here. But anyway, he didn't. So they sit down and my husband says, as you know, um, Suzanne's you know, been on the show for six years now and she has the highest demographics of all women in television in the desired ages of 18 to 49 and she's been on you know, hundreds of, of magazine covers and she brought a, a, so much publicity to the show. So she would like to um, be paid, which the, the men are averaging on television, which is 150000 a week uh, and a piece of the back end. And Mickey Ross, <laughs> Mickey Ross is in the chair and he's smoking. And when Alan finishes, he throws his cigarettes up, stomps it out with his feet, leans over to my husband. He said, you want me to share my blood with her? And my husband stood up nose to nose and said, yes. And at that moment, my career was over. <laughs> Done. So. In the morning when my husband had left for this meeting, he said, you know, this could all blow out of the water. And I said, yeah. He said, so you want me to go ahead with this? And I said, they're not going to get rid of Chrissy. <laughs> Never think that you are, you are not replaceable. Rule number one. So I'm waiting at home, obviously anxious, no cell phones at that time. And so I hear the front door open. And I can tell by the way the door closes and the sound of his stairs, walking, his feet walking up the stairs, that this is not good. And he walks into the living room where I'm sitting and he goes, I said, what? He said, you're out. I'm out? He said, you're out. It's over. So what they did do was force me to finish out the year, but diminish me to a minute at the end they built a little side set. It was crazy what they did. They would have a police guard come meet me at the back door, walk me in. Um, I was not allowed to see anybody from the uh, original show, only the wardrobe guy who would bring me a pair of shorts and something. And my set was a chair and a phone and a lamp and one camera. And I would speak to myself on the phone and go, oh, I'm so sorry, I know she's still sick. I wish I could be there. And I did that to finish out the season. And I would usually leave in tears because it was just so, it just felt so like I was being punished, like I was a bad girl, brought up all my old feelings of low self-worth and all that. It was just a terrible time. And for a year after that, I went from being the, the number one actress on television in those desired demographics to now I couldn't get an interview. And uh, it wasn't like today that negatives propel you and you know you do all you go on hard copy and you go on ET and you go on uh, Insider and all that there wasn't any of that and so I sat home for the better part of a year thinking why did I do it here I had the world by the tail why did I why did I blow it why did I think that I should be paid what they're paying the man why did I what, what did I do and one day I hear voices sometimes not in a weird way I hear a voice in my head, like, like a loudspeaker. It says, why are you focused on what you don't have? Why don't you focus on what it is you do have? I sat back and thought, what do I have? 
but I have nothing. What do I have? Visibility. Wow. Everybody in this country knows my name. I have visibility. That's something. Most people don't, will never get that. What can I do with that? And that's when I sent Alan in um, to Vegas. And I went in, and five years later, I walked up on a stage along with Frank Sinatra. He was the male entertainer of the year, and I was the female entertainer of the year. So, life, the reinvention began. <laughs>